Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Learn Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom in the Cloud. This is the second to last video in the Learn Lightroom CC video series. In this episode, I'm just going to give you an overview on Lightroom CC for a smartphone. That's because one thing Lightroom CC does have going for it is it's pretty consistent from the desktop to the tablet to the smartphone. And I really covered a lot about Lightroom CC already on the desktop. And I had a couple videos on the tablet. And really, the smartphone's pretty much the same. So I'm just going to give you an overview where stuff is and how it might work on a smartphone. In the last episode of this series, when we get to that, I'm going to tie up any loose ends. I know there's a few things I really didn't cover very thoroughly. I want to take care of that. If you have any questions whatsoever, in the comment section below this video, please pose your question, and I'll make sure that I answer any and all questions in that last video. Now I mentioned we're just going to do an overview of Lightroom CC on a smartphone. I happen to be using an iPhone 7, so it's a couple years old. It's a relatively older phone. And the Lightroom CC works fine on the iPhone 7. Uh, and as you can see, the layout's the same as the tablet. On the left-hand side, we have the library. And at the very top, you know, I have my all photos. I have Lightroom camera photos right here. These are, are images that I would have taken with my phone from within Lightroom. Obviously, it says zero. I didn't take any. Recently added images would be there. Below that are people. Below that are my albums, and remember albums are the same as collections in Lightroom Classic CC. And I have a folder at the very top there called My Pictures. That's the same as a collection set in Lightroom Classic CC. And when you open that, I have a number of uh, albums inside of there uh, that we, you know, same albums I've had throughout the series. Below that, I have an album all by itself called Images I'm Currently Processing. Wherever throughout the workspace you see these horizontal bars right here, um, that's just a sort that allows you to sort and it will give you different ways, like in this case, title or photo count, locally stored. Um, so you'll see that throughout the workspace a lot, those three bars. Uh, to the right of the library, we have where those like two uh, mannequin icons are. Those are images that we shared to the web. And in this case, I think I only shared one image as a demonstration. So that would be there. And again, we have the sort bars right there. Since we only have one image, it's no big deal. Um, so we go back to all photos. Now to the right of that, along the top, we have Sensei Search, which is this magnifying glass. And I have my phone in airplane mode, so we're not interrupted by a bunch of notifications. And when you're in airplane mode, Sensei Search does not work. And just to remind you of those that don't know, Sensei Search is a new technology Adobe is using where it's artificial intelligence, where the application actually analyzes what's in the photo. You don't have to write keywords or make sure that it's in the metadata. The software actually will look for trees, people, dogs, cats, giraffes, anything in the photo, and it recognizes it. And then you'd be able, theoretically, to search for this. Um, now, because I'm in airplane mode, it doesn't work. Apparently, it must um, access Adobe server somehow when it does these searches. To the right of that, where you have that wine glass right there, that is just another way to filter the images or filter, you know, by star rating or the flag status. Also, metadata searches by camera, uh, media type, location, the people, keywords. So, all different types of search functionality there. To the right of that, where the cloud is, you see the exclamation point. That's just the syncing uh, with your you know, photos online because, again, Lightroom CC is meant to store the images online, and then you could work, it, work on the images on any device from your desktop to your laptop to your tablet to your smartphone. Because I'm in airplane mode, that has that little exclamation point there. It's not syncing at the moment. Now, to the right of that, that three dots, there's a lot of functionality under here. I'm not going to go through everything, but you have different sort options. That's basically what segmentation is. Like right now, I don't have any sorting done at all. But let's say I wanted to do it by months. 
You can see now that all photos are sorted by the month they were taken. Uh, so you could do different types of sorting of the layout with, with segmentation. Below that, you could sort different sorting by the capture date, the file name, and things like that. Um, different view options. Uh, right now, I have it by file type, and you can see that the raw images say raw in the corner. And you can see as I tapped on that, it is selected, and I could delete it or, or across the bottom here. You could see different things or share it or add it to an album if I wanted to. Just tap on it again to deselect it, hit cancel up there. Go back to those three dots on the top right. I could do a slideshow. Um, I could add photos. When you add photos, you could add from the camera roll or from files. You also could do that over here in the lower right. You could see that in blue on the left is from the camera roll. To the right of that is from the camera itself. So I would click on that and I could take a picture. When I mentioned to take a picture from inside of Lightroom, that's how you would do it. And it would automatically get loaded into Lightroom. So there's a lot of settings too um, that you could go through here. Just your shortcuts, that little red dot you see is uh, show touches down there at the very bottom. And two finger taps, you could change all that and edit that if you want. Now, that's just kind of like the library module, I guess you would call, like if you wanted to try, try to draw a comparison uh, to Lightroom Classic CC. But once you decide you want to work on an image, you could just tap on it and it opens up in the editor. And you can see in the top left, it says edit. And there's other functionalities, rate and review, activity, keywords. You could add keywords. You could just get the info for the image on the far right um, there. So we're going to go back to edit. Along the top, we could export the image right here. And you could share it, save it to the camera, save it to files. And then we have the clouds again, and that's just the syncing, and that's interrupted, of course. We have three dots. A lot of different things here, different view options, uh, copy uh, settings. When you're copying your adjustments and you want to paste them to a different image, what exactly are you going to be copying? And you could see white balance, basic tone clarity, and you could go in and specify what you want to be copied when you copy adjustments. And then you could paste them with that option right there. Um, you could create a preset. Again, the slideshow's there and settings are there. Now, to the far right, we have the actual tool well. All the different adjustments are here. At the very top, we have local adjustments. If you click on that, you'll have the plus sign on the left, and you have the brush, the radial filter, and the graduated filter. And I did get emails, uh, at least one that I remember, from someone as I really didn't cover these very thoroughly. And I will in the last video, I'll make it a point to make sure that I cover how to do radial filters and graduated filters more thoroughly. Um, so like right now, I think on this image, I happen to have a graduated filter and I have the graduated filter activated. And you can see right in the middle here, you can see that plus sign. And I just added another one uh, I didn't want to. So right here is undo on the top right hand corner. So I could undo that. But I do have a... Uh, graduated filter on here, you can see that little square that's right in the middle. And if I put my tap that square and make it active, you can see that that's my graduated filter. So I could adjust this, move it around, and do what I need to do. And once you have, uh, you're doing an adjustment, let's say you're uh, apply, in this case, a uh, gradient or a graduated filter, um, the overlay shows, so you see all that red. But as soon as you start doing adjustment, the, an, an adjustment, any adjustment, the overlay will disappear. So all the adjustments now I could do to this graduated filter on the right, the very top is the lighting adjustments. So if I want to add contrast, as soon as I start adjusting, you could see that that overlay disappears. So these are some adjustments. You could then do the temperature adjustments, add saturation, you could um, just do a lot with, with a lot of power with these local adjustments. Clarity and dehaze, sharpening and noise reduction, um, moray patterns, uh, defringe. Um, here we could apply adjustments from the previous photo, so basically copying. And then this is an, kind of an undo right there. And we're not going to undo that, but let's see. 
reset it and different options to reset. So these are all the adjustments. When you're satisfied with your adjustments in the lower right hand side, you can see this check mark. Just click there and then you're done with your local adjustments. Below that, we have the healing brush and clone stamp tool. And again, I'll cover that more thoroughly in our last episode. We have the crop tool, and I did talk about that in a past episode. Below the crop tool, we have uh, different profiles, and we have all the profiles. Uh, click favorites, it will work. There it goes. Um, remember in our last episode, I demonstrated how to take all your third party profiles and presets that are in Lightroom Classic CC. They don't automatically show up in Lightroom CC, but I demonstrated how to get them into Lightroom CC. And I did that on a desktop. And I mentioned once you do that, they'll be on all your other devices as well, your tablet and your smartphone. And you can see that all my Morganti uh, profiles that I sell and the Patreon Rewards profiles are all there. Those are um, profiles that I added in that last video. So that just kind of proves that they show up on your um, on your uh, other devices. So we're gonna X out of that. Um, below that, uh, this is like a, um, a one-click enhance. And I'm gonna undo it, undo, it's auto, basically auto settings right there to the right of that red dot. Bam, and you could undo it with the undo button right there and you might have noticed if I just hold my finger on the image there's before there's after there's before there's after now below the auto settings is the light settings exposure contrast highlights you can see I did some adjustments on this image also the tone curve is here if we click here and the tone curve like the tablet shows up right on the image so you could do your tone curve adjustments when you're done with it you just click done Below the light adjustments, right here, we have the color temperature, vibrance, and saturation adjustments. We also have the color mix. So if you click there, one thing I didn't cover is there's targeted adjustments available. And you can see right to the right of where it says color mix, there's that circle with arrows. If you click on that, we're now in the targeted adjustment mode. And let's say I want to affect the saturation of a color. Doesn't matter. You don't have to tell it what color. Just click on that target adjustment. Click on saturation. Let's say I think the orange is a little bit too saturated. I would put my finger right on the orange and drag down. And you can see I'm bringing down the saturation of orange. And it's, it's bringing down yellow a little bit too. You can see on the far right uh, where it shows those two colors. You could do the same for the luminance values. Let's say I want to make those darker. So you could do that with any color. It's not just, um, not just you know, orange in that case. If I go to saturation, I want to affect green. I could go right, let's say, on the green bush right here and push it up. And I'm, in this case, it's still doing orange. Here, let's go here. Now it's doing blue. Okay, so you see how you could just, just do a targeted adjustment. I love the targeted adjustments. I think it works really well. And when you're done with targeted adjustments, just click on it again. When you're done with the color mix panel, just click on done. And again, color mix is within this um, adjustment right here. And you could convert to black and white here as well if you wanted to. Okay, below that is we have clarity, dehaze, uh, or vignette functionality right here. And then all the adjustments for the vignette are below that. And grain, if you wanted to add grain to the image, that's there too. The two sliders below grain become active when grain is moved off of zero. When it's on zero, you can see how they're inactive. Also hidden on this panel is split toning. You can see it's right there. So then you could you know, give a tone to your highlights, a color tone to your highlights, and a color tone to your shadows. When you're done, click Done. Uh, let's see, below that, or no, I skipped one, is uh, sharpening and noise reduction. And I was wrong about something, and I'd like to thank a uh, few people pointed it out. I mentioned in at least two videos that, with the iPad at least, that the masking for sharpening doesn't work. 
And they pointed out that um, I was wrong and I was doing it really improperly. I was trying to do it like you would set a white or black point. And it doesn't work that way. For example, if I want to see the mask for sharpening, uh, if I take the sharpening slider and I start moving it, you can see I'm sharpening the image, right? Well, if I want to see that mask, you know, that black and white kind of negative image, with my right index finger holding the slider, take my left index finger and just press on the image and just wait. Kind of have to be patient. There. Oops, I got to do, I did, I'm sorry, I was doing sharpening. I meant masking, right? So I'm going to do masking. And then I'm going to go left. There we go. There. Now we see that kind of negative image. And it, as soon as I start to adjust the slider, though, it see it goes away. So you have to be patient and wait. And then adjust, wait. So it, its functionality is a little different than the desktop. And that's what, I guess, threw me off. And plus, I was just not informed properly. So uh, that's how you do masking. And it works that way on a tablet computer as well. Also, you may have noticed when I was wrong again and I was doing the sharpening, uh, when, I, when I put my finger down, we got that grayscale. Sometimes sharpening helps if you get a grayscale image or a black and white image. And that will do that on probably all of them. I didn't try it. Yeah, you get that kind of weird image. You get uh, this kind of gray image. You'll, you get that in Lightroom Classic CC2 if you hold the Alt or Option key in when you adjust any of these sliders. You get these kind of looks. So that all works. Um, that's great. Uh, below that, we have lens corrections. Uh, just an on-off switch, basically, to remove chromatic aberration and enable lens corrections themselves. Uh, below that, uh, we have the um, transform tools. Um, this, of course, comes in handy with architecture. When you have buildings tilted in or tilted backwards, uh, you could correct it all with the transform tools. Not really applicable to this image. Uh, below that, we have the actual presets. And again, um, all the presets I imported into Lightroom CC in our last video show up on the iPhone as well. And you can see there's all the Patreon rewards and the actual presets I sell are below that. So all the presets are there. When you're done with the panel, just click either the checkbox down here at the bottom. When you, if you apply a preset, click that checkbox. Since I didn't apply a preset, that checkbox is grayed out. Click the X when you're done. And finally, yeah, that was uh, these, this, um, here, let me, yeah, those are presets. Then this right here is you could apply your adjustments from the previous photo, all the adjustments or just your last adjustments there with that function there. Uh, this is reset. You could click there and it gives you options to reset this image uh, right to when you opened it, when you imported it. Um, so you could do re uh, reset there. So pretty much identical, tell you the truth, to the tablet version. It works pretty much the same way. Uh, when you're done, you could go back to the library itself and pick another image to process. So again, that's kind of, uh, I know it's just an overview of the smartphone processing in Lightroom CC. Uh, but like I mentioned, we cover recovered this already in previous episodes. Remember, if there's anything you want me to cover, touch on that I didn't already, um, make a comment below and I'll make sure I cover it in that last video, which should be coming up in about a week. Thank you everyone for watching my video series, Learn Lightroom CC. If you could do me a favor and like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. Also, in the description below this video will be a link to my website. Come visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find all kinds of free photography how-to articles and videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.